Hi, and thanks for watching this video. This tiny little radio, is it upside down? Yep. This tiny little radio is called the QYT KT5000. I think it's just recently introduced. Um, and the interesting thing about this, out of all the tiny radios that come out of China, this one actually has a detachable head. You push this button and uh, the head comes off and it's just connected by this short little separation cable there. Now, speaking of separation cables, it does come with a separation cable. And this thing is massive. It's like four and a half meters long. So the implication is that uh, you can take the radio body and put it in the trunk of the car and then run that separation cable up to the control head. One little problem with that is that the mic does not connect to the control head, it connects to the radio body. So what are you supposed to do if your radio body is in the trunk and uh, you need to plug the mic in somewhere, you're gonna need a very long extension cable. And I think that's something they just didn't think out very carefully when they, uh, when they did this. So um, it kind of implies that you're gonna have to put the radio body underneath the, the driver's seat and uh, run the mic uh, from, from there up to where you're sitting. Uh, problem with that is I found it's uh, awfully short and uh, very tight to get the, the cable up to your mouth uh, when it's sitting underneath the car seat. So the manufacturer claims that uh, this will put out 20 to 25 watts on VHF, two meters, and somewhat less on 70 centimeters. Well, I did some tests, we'll talk about that a little later, and uh, I beg to differ on their numbers. One of the things you wanna do right away when you power this radio up first is get rid of the beep, because there's this awfully loud click every time you, say, go up or down in the channels, um, it's extremely loud, and uh, by turning the beep off, that tends to uh, disappear. The only other time I hear that click is when the squelch um, opens up and then closes again, but it's not as uh, annoying as it is when you're changing you know, memory channels or whatever. So in order to do that, you just hit the menu button, which is on the left-hand side. Uh, once it's powered up, uh, then go into uh, or type in 09 and that'll take you to that beep uh, setting and then just hit menu again and then up down until it's instead of saying on it says off hit menu again twice and then exit and then you're all done so that takes care of the beep now um, the manual it does come with a manual Let's see if we can uh, get a good shot of it here. Um, and I will say it's, it's written in proper English, which is quite surprising for a Chinese manual. It's not that broken uh, Chinglish that we're used to. The problem is there's very little useful information in here, uh, apart from, say, the, all the codes for the you know, different functions, like the one I just described, uh, setting the beep and so on. Um, there is a, a little diagram near the beginning um, which shows the one of two terminals on the back. There's one called data, which is kind of a mystery thing. It's, um, it says in the, in the manual that it's uh, data for, for programming. It's a programming jack but they don't mention anything about what kind of cable to get. Now, I think on Amazon, if you buy the standard QYT programming cable, that might work. Um, but um, the other connector, if you need to put an external speaker on, um, you're gonna have to probably do some cobbling up. Um, I noticed it's uh, actually a, not just a simple, you know, mono or stereo three and a half millimeter jack. It's uh, tip ring ring and sleeve or TRRS which means it's meant for a headset 
with a push to talk uh, microphone and speaker so in order to get the speaker you may have to you know cannibalize a cable I'm not sure if one is available that would go from TRRS uh, out to a mono uh, three three and a half millimeter or whatever but uh, that's one thing the other thing is and uh, this this is the uh, whole reason we're the other half of this video has been produced, as you will see in a minute, is about programming. Now I mentioned that data hole, and as far as I know, uh, this radio is not compatible with Chirp programming, so uh, it's kind of a doing a, you'd have to do a kind of a spreadsheet uh, type thing. I think there is a program for it, but I'm, I'm not gonna pursue that. In my area, we only have about five to ten repeaters so I decided to program manually but on page 12 in this manual they talk about the channel or MR mode which is the memory mode and it makes a statement that to find out more on how to program channels see chapter programming so if you go over to chapter programming that's all you get is this one page and it's really uninformative so as I say the manual it's good for reference for those function codes but beyond that not much use so let's get into uh, how you manually program repeaters into this radio okay let's see what's involved in programming a repeater in order to do so to start you have to ensure you're in VFO mode that's from this button here It'll toggle between memory channels and VFO. So once you're in VFO, uh, I know the repeater I want to program has an output frequency, in other words, my receive frequency of 147.00. So I'll just type it in, punch it in, whatever. Got to fill all those marks there. And now, I'm going to go and push the menu button and I'm going to type in 1-3 and that takes me to the, the tone and in this case I'm going to be using 114.8 so push menu again and you notice the arrow drops down and now you can use the up down buttons to get to the PL tone frequency you want. Once you've done that, hit menu again, and you notice the cursor drop jumps back up again. Now you can do one of two things. You can either hit the exit AB button, which takes you back to that screen, and then press menu again to go to the next item, or you can just type in the number direct for the next menu item uh, directly from where you are as long as the cursor is at the top here we've dialed in our frequency here for the PL tone so I want to go to I have to push menu again and go to 42 and this shows the shift direction so if I hit menu and then go up and go through off and then plus and hit menu again and uh, that shift is, is now put in. And we're gonna go directly and type 43. And that gives us the offset frequency. And in this case, it's uh, showing 600 kilohertz, so I'm not gonna touch that. So that's fine. One other uh, you might want to do is set the power. So hit menu again. And that's 03 for power. On this particular repeater, I just want to put um, low power. So if I go hit the down button, there it's low, hit menu again, I'll hit exit, and I'm back here. Now we're going to store our uh, repeater settings into a memory channel. And I'm going to record it into a channel that's currently occupied. So let's see what happens here. If I go menu 40, and that gets me into the memory channel screen. If I go down, whoops. If 
if I go down to channel 7, you notice there's a CH in front of the 7. Well, that means, uh, if I, in my experience with this, um, you can't just write over top of that. You have to go and delete it, as far as I know. I, I could be wrong. If I am, let me know in the, uh, in the comments below. Um, okay, so let's go to, from there, let's go to 4.1, which is the delete channel screen. Hit menu again, go down to channel seven, hit menu, and from there we'll go to four zero. Hit menu, down to channel seven. And you notice there's no C, uh, CH in front of the 007, so we're okay. So I want to record uh, into that memory location now, so I hit menu. And now CH has, has appeared. It's showing that it's recorded into uh, position seven. And uh, we can go out from there and key the transmitter. You see, it, it has triggered the repeater, but we're not done yet. Even though we've stored it into a memory channel um, and it seems to work, it actually won't once you go into uh, memory recall mode and dial up that channel seven, it will not work. So what we have to do is now we have to put in the our transmit frequency or the repeater input frequency, which is 147.6000. Go into menu again and it's gone back to the memory channel screen. Hit menu again and menu again and exit and now we should be we should be done if we go to channel go down to seven it now works just by way of clarification we have the a vfo and the b vfo one above the other we're currently in the a vfo and uh, even though we're in channel mode right now you can see it's channel 7 and it's given it a name of channel 007 well we might want to change that so if we go to menu and 2 7 now it says a c a channel a so that refers to the a vfo not the b vfo and uh, down here, if we go hit menu again and go up, down, we see we can change the name or just show, show the frequency or the channel number. We want to put a name in there. So we we'll hit that. And we're going to go to 26 now, which is where we actually do the naming. Hit menu. And now we just use the up, down buttons to change the name or change that particular character anyway so and then if we hit the pound sign key that takes us to the next position even though you can't see a cursor there we can actually put in numbers now like six directly without having to do all that scrolling and and go on to the next one by hitting the pound sign uh, or hashtag again and use the up down buttons and it does a funny thing it does jump over so if you have to go back hit the asterisk key i'm going to hit it a few times so now it's on the first character again so we know we have to hit it once twice and then now we're in the right position So you get the idea, hit pound sign again, and then we can change this character as well. And then once you hit, uh, that's a funny name, but anyway, it's not a complete call sign. 
but you might want to just put the name of a repeater or a city in there instead. So if we go back here, you notice it's put the name in there. You'll notice at the top of the screen there is a bar graph indicating power output. When you key the transmitter in low power mode, it indicates 5 watts. In medium power, 10 watts. And in high power, 20 watts. This does not indicate actual power output, but is intended to show you expected power output. Now, your mileage may vary, but at low power into a dummy load on 2 meters, Using the top scale on the meter, I measured six and a quarter watts. At medium power, 10.75 watts. And at high power, 16 and a half watts, far short of the expected 20 watts. Due to equipment limitations, I was only able to measure up to 10 watts on UHF. Using the bottom scale on the meter, I measured 5.7 watts at low power. This is only slightly lower than the VHF reading, so I can only assume the medium and high power readings are also slightly lower than at VHF. Now if you just wanted to program a simplex channel, all you need to do is dial up the frequency, um, go into the memory channel store function, which is function 40, and uh, pick your channel and, and save it. You don't need to put all those other parameters in like uh, offset and uh, offset direction and all that stuff and CTCSS codes. Um, so, in the way of conclusions, would I recommend this radio? Absolutely yes. Um, certainly the on-air reports that I got said that the audio was good and that seems to be consistent with a lot of Chinese radios. They seem to be uh, uh, well made in that regard. So if this radio interests you, there's a link down below. Check that out in the description. And thank you for watching this video. I hope it was useful to you. And if it was, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And we'll see you in the next one.